this is a generalization. This is a new unit uh, where we are generalizing what we just saw with support vector machines to reframe the problem of learning as a, a, as an optimization problem. In particular, as a minim as a problem of minimizing something called the loss. The setup for this idea, and this is the dominant, this is the dominant approach for machine learning today. The setup is we are we have examples x that, that are drawn from some fixed possibly unknown distribution. Um, and we have a hidden oracle f that labels these examples. Our goal is to find the hypothesis that we make test. This is exactly the same thing that we've done so far. Rather than thinking of inventing a learning algorithm that searches over the hypothesis space, we will think about what does successful learning mean. So we'll invent a function L, capital L, called the loss, that penalizes bad hypotheses. It's a number. It assigns a penalty for bad functions in the hypothesis space. And the goal of learning is to use whatever mechanism we can invent to find a function that minimizes the expected loss. The expected loss because it's an expectation over examples drawn from that distribution. In other words, the goal of learning is to minimize the expected value, the expectation where examples are drawn from the, the uh, possibly unknown distribution of the loss function applied to the prediction of, and the ground truth. So H of X is the prediction of that uh, hypothesis that we are currently entertaining. F of X is the ground truth. And the loss function basically gives you a number that says, when you apply H to this example and produce this label, this is how bad it is. And you find the expected value of the loss. And the goal of learning is to find the the hypothesis that minimizes the loss, the expected loss. Does anyone see a problem with this? We don't know F. That is one of the problems, but there's a more pressing issue. Here. Okay, that's another problem, which is related to what you said. It could overfit, but there's a more pressing issue. Okay, if you had to implement this, what where 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 could you sort of fail? Um, so it's not my expected loss, right? Yes. Then we have data. Yes. How is it my expected loss for my final data? Yes. We don't know this distribution D. The distribution D is unknown. The instance space might be infinitely large. How can we possibly compute this expectation? If we cannot compute the expectation, we cannot minimize it. So this is, in some sense, a problem that cannot be solved. It just shows, here is a problem I would like to solve. The standard approach for, um, for uh, approximating expectations when you don't have access to the distribution is to keep sampling the distribution and take the empirical average. The average approximates an expectation. And that's what we'll do. Instead of computing the expected loss, what we'll do is we'll take the average loss. This is simply one divided by M, the sum of all the losses. M is a training set. M is the size of the training set. So we calculate the average loss on a set of training examples, and we can minimize that quantity here. Still doesn't solve all the problems that you all mentioned, but at least it gets rid of this problem that we have to deal with this unknown distribution. We don't have access to the distribution, but we can keep we can keep sampling from that distribution. We have we have the ability to keep asking for examples from that distribution. So we construct a training set. And once you have a training set, you can calculate the average loss or the, it's typically, it's not called the average loss, it's called the empirical loss. It's just an empirical estimate of the expected loss. And you minimize that. Any questions? So now we have the new agenda here. The program for learning is to minimize the empirical loss of the training set. Now what's the problem?
Yes. That's a very good point. That's not what I had in mind, but I'll just address that. Uh, you know, when I say, is there a problem here? I'm really asking, read my mind. That makes no sense. But that's a very good point. Um, there's no guarantee that the empirical loss actually matches the expected loss. And the answer to that is a rather lame one, I think. It says, yeah, it does not, it, it, there's no guarantee. But as the training set gets larger and larger, you'll get closer and closer in approximation by the law of large numbers. So rather than a guarantee, just the, the answer there is make your training data as big as you can. Um, it's not a happy answer, but it is an answer. What about overfitting though? Um, I can give you a classifier that what is the lowest empirical loss that you can ever get on a training set? Zero. And the way you get that is just memorizing the training data. You can just put the training data in a table and uh, make the, uh, and you know, if a new exam for a test set, if that test example is in the table, you predict that you just return the label that was associated with that. Otherwise, you just flip a coin. It's going to be a zero training error. The minimum empirical loss without any other considerations is going to be zero. So this thing can overfit. So we need something that penalizes complexity. The expression that penalizes complexity in this literature is typically called a regularizer. So we have a regularizer that can penalize complex hypotheses. So rather than just minimizing the empirical loss, we have the problem of minimizing the regularized empirical loss. So we have a term called the regularizer that penalizes complexity. And then we have the empirical loss that says do well on the training data. The first term is often but not always independent of the data. The second term is essentially a data dependent function. We've already seen this example. With linear classifiers, there are many different regularizers that can exist. A linear classifier is nothing but a weight vector. And the most common regularizer for a linear classifier is also is this expression that we've seen before, half W transpose W, which is also called the L2 regularizer. Um, because it's the you it's the L2 norm, it's a squared norm. Um, so it is squared Euclidean distance, um, or length of the vector really. Um, and then you can have any loss function. But what about the loss function? The loss function can penalize. It, its job is to penalize mistakes. And we are minimizing the average loss. What's the best loss function? What's the ideal case? What's the, if no other concern existed, what loss function would you need to use for classification if the only thing that matters is accuracy? Yes. Is the label correct? That's right. The, or rather, is the label wrong? Um, the ideal loss function to minimize for if the only thing you care about is accuracy is error. You just want to minimize the error. Error is simply counting the number of mistakes. Counting the number of mistakes, each mistake is a, 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 an example of a mistake if the prediction and the ground truth are different. If the prediction and the ground truth are the same, it's not a mistake. So just, we've seen this before, right? We've seen this before. In fact, we had a name for it. It's called the 0-1 loss. The 0-1 loss is a loss function that penalizes mistakes. If you have a prediction y prime and the ground truth y, if y prime and y are different, the 0-1 loss takes the value 1. If y prime and y are the same, the 0, 1 loss is 0. So it, the name is kind of, it gives away the game. It's either 0 or it's 1. And uh, in fact, adding up the 0, 1 loss over the training data is nothing but the error on the training data. Because it counts, it, 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 it for each example where there's an error, you're adding a 1. So you get, you're adding, you're adding 1 as many times as there are errors, so it's simply counting the errors. We've seen this for linear classifiers. For linear classifiers, we know that a mistake happens when um, the error, uh, when y w transpose x is negative or it's not positive. 
So the zero one loss can be defined as, uh, uh, in fact, I would write this slightly differently. I'll write this as of y comma x comma w. The zero one loss is simply uh, defined to be one if y w transpose x is one. If it is uh, not positive, if it is positive, then the zero one loss is zero. This is the thing that we would ideally like to optimize if all we care about is accuracy. Unfortunately, and I mentioned this earlier, minimizing the zero one loss is intractable. So we need to have surrogates that are better, uh, that behave better for optimization. In the, in a, as a plot, if I plot this as a, uh, the, the horizontal axis here is y w transpose x. The vertical axis is the value of the loss. The zero one loss is simply saying on this side, we have correct. On this side, we have error. And if we have an error, then there is the zero one loss takes the value of one. If there's no error, the zero one loss takes the value of zero. So it's convenient to plot this as a function of uh, y w transpose x. We've already encountered the hinge loss. The hinge loss uh, is one of the many surrogates of the zero one loss. It has these three regimes. If the example lies outside the margin, then there is no penalty. If the example lies on the wrong side of the margin, uh, or if misclassified or it lies on the wrong side of the margin, the penalty is uh, it grows linearly uh, depending on how far the example is from the margin. This is one of the surrogates for the zero one loss. And the good news is the FPM loss or the hinge loss is convex and it has all these nice properties. But this is not the only loss that exists. Um, we've seen SVMs and uh, there are actually, there are a few variants of SVMs that we've not encountered. The reason SVM nicely fits into this, we've already encountered this before. There's the regularizer, there's the empirical loss. Uh, the regularizer maximizes the margin. The empirical loss penalizes mistakes. And there's a hyperparameter C that trades off between them, that controls how much of these do you like. But there are other loss functions. We've already seen the perceptron. The perceptron corresponds to its own loss, the perceptron loss. We've seen hinge loss. We've encountered animals before. It turns out that if you treat each feature as a weak classifier, then the Adaboost algorithm actually minimizes something called the exponential loss, which is a surrogate for the zero one loss. Logistic regression minimizes the logistic loss. There are different loss functions. Let's put them all on the same plot. So uh, the thing that we really want to do for accuracy is the zero one loss. The hinge loss corresponds to the SPM. Perceptron minimizes the perceptron loss. Notice that the only difference between perceptron and SPM is this. The fact that SVM is just shifted, uh, that takes that gives you the margin. We, uh, I'm not proving this, but uh, it turns out the Adaboost algorithm corresponds to the exponential loss. Eventually, when we come to logistic regression, you'll see this again, but logistic regression is another surrogate for the zero one loss and it minimizes the logistic loss. Um, we have a minute, so I want to quickly wrap this up. Um, this is a very productive way to think about machine learning. Rather than thinking about machine learning as I need to invent a learning algorithm, the, the uh, agenda of learning as loss minimization is write down a loss function that penalizes bad behavior on part of your classifier, on part of your bots. And when you write down the loss function, make sure it is at least sub differentiable and it should be a function of the parameter. And the goal of learning is to minimize empirical loss. It turns out that. Uh, Doing just that can lead to overfitting. So there's a regularizer. We've seen one regularizer. Uh, we'll encounter another way to uh, penalize complexity uh, that's used more popularly with neural networks. It's an idea called drop-off. This, this agenda drives modern machine learning today. It doesn't matter. Notice that in defining the loss function, I of course, I said uh, for linear classifiers, we can write down a loss like this, but the hinge loss is just defined in terms of, uh, can be defined in terms of um, any nonlinear scoring function. Instead of y w transpose x, I can just have y times score of x. The score can come from some nonlinear thing. And the, it, it, this idea is really the driving force behind uh, libraries like PyTorch, where that allow you to define loss functions 
uh, effectively, efficiently, and just let the optimizing uh, optimizer do its job. Okay, uh, I'll stop now. Uh, if you have any questions, we can take it in office hours.